let's talk about uh uh friggin xbox making a handle okay let's do that somebody said what's on the rog there's nothing on it just it's just the bike just sitting there yeah uh, a, hand, a handheld Xbox? Microsoft's gaming chief can't stop thinking about it. Neither can I. Uh, Phil Spencer has tried all of the new PC gaming handhelds, the ROG Ally, the, the, the Lenovo Legion Go, Lenovo. and it, 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 it should have a better name, <laughs> and the Steam Deck. He's impressed, but he can't shake one question. How, how would he make them more Xbox? I want my Lenovo Legion Go to feel like an Xbox, Spencer told Polygon in an interview during the annual uh, game developer conference. I brought the Lenovo Go uh, with me to GDC. I'm on the airplane, and I have a list of everything that makes it not feel like an Xbox. I love this. Uh, forget, forget about the brand. More like, are all of my games there? Do all my games show up with the save files that I want? I'll tell you one game that doesn't work right now. It's driving me crazy. Is Fallout 76. It doesn't have cross save. I love that. I also love that he's using the Legion Go, yeah. which is uh, instead of the Asus ROG Alley, which they like... Uh, uh, then they partner with them. Yeah, they made yeah. a big push for the ROG Ally. Yeah, uh, so it's cool to see them use the new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they know that there's going to be a lot of these PC handhelds coming out from these PC manufacturers, uh, and it's interesting to see them care about what all of these handheld manufacturers are getting wrong. Yeah, and trying to make a push to to get them right. Uh, where was I? Uh, I want to be able to boot into the Xbox app in a full screen, but in a com but in a compact mode, and all of my social experiences is there. Like I want it to feel like the dash of my Xbox when I turn on the television, except I want it on those devices. According to Spencer, the Xbox hardware team, led by Ramon uh, Sones, is considering different hardware form factors and things that they could do. Um, as it plans the future of the Xbox hardware. Uh, what should we build that will find new players, Spencer said. That will allow people to play at times when they couldn't, uh, when they couldn't go play in the past. In our expansive interview, uh, Spencer describes two approaches to making Xbox available on handhelds, the hardware versus the software approach. As he said, he has strong feelings about the handheld Xbox device, how a handheld Xbox device should feel. Uh, but he also recognizes having learned from the console business that players may choose brands other than Xbox. For those players, Spencer wants to improve the Xbox handheld gaming software experience too, particularly for people who have devices running Windows like the Legion Go or the Ally. I like the fact that Valve, Lenovo, and Asus uh, went out and innovated in new form factors. And I will say that when I'm playing on those devices, it almost feels like a console than a PC, nine times out of 10. The things that usually frustrate me more, the use, things that usually frustrate me are more Windows-based than device-based which is an area I feel uh, some ownership of. Like I want to be able to log in with a controller. I've got my list of things we should go do. Yeah. I just picture him with like a, a moleskin, like writing down like all of his stuff. Yeah, he should. Yeah. <laughs> it, th this is fantastic news because there's a lot of stuff that I've been frustrated right. with. Right. And he's right. He should take ownership over this because it, he's the guy to fix he's it. He's the guy at Xbox. Yeah. He's, if anybody's going to fix this, it's him. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, all of these uh, manufacturers are trying to get into the space, uh, and it would be a lot easier if Windows was easier to use yeah. in this space. He's, he mentioned uh, logging in with a controller. When you have a Windows handheld, uh, it defaults to logging in with a pin. Yeah. They, a lot of them have uh, fingerprint readers, but the fingerprint readers are always fucking horrible. Right. These MacBooks have pretty decent fingerprint readers. Right. I still don't use it, though. I still yeah. just type in my password. Uh, typing in a password on a Windows handheld is terrible. It, you, you you end up using the touch screen and you just use a pen yeah. and it sucks. So I try to remove the password on all of them. Um, and that's just one of them of the many problems. Besides that, uh, just navigating the UI with a controller is uh, uh, or, or, with the touch screen is is it's horrible. Yeah, it's just an all around horrible experience. And also being able to uh, link your saves across stuff. It's all great. Right now, all my stuff is very segmented because I got uh, Game Pass and Steam yeah. and whatever. I try to keep everything localized with Steam, uh, and that helps a lot. But it would be really nice if Game Pass stuff worked better across uh, PC, PC handheld, and Xbox and right. stuff like that. 
Uh, Spencer has spent his tenure at Microsoft pushing Xbox to be both a console experience and a software experience that follows players wherever they enjoy games. That philosophy expands with his views on handheld gaming. From a ga game creator standpoint, uh, Spencer said, I can then go build a single version of my game that spans more hardware and reaches more customers. Uh, and I would say for players, it reduces friction. Like if I want to go play on my console right now, uh, if I want to play my console games on the go with a handheld, I don't want to only be able to buy one brand of handheld, right? I want everything that we're doing uh, in the handheld space to be great. But if somebody chooses to play today somewhere else, I don't want them to feel like a lesser Xbox player. Over the past seven years, we've seen Xbox development team uh, get creative with its software, moving games to new platforms, building up the Game Pass subscription service, and making games playable on smartphones through streaming. As uh, we wrapped up our conversation, Spencer wouldn't outright announce an official Xbox handheld, but he did say uh, he sees this, he sees a similar level of creativity coming to hardware that Xbox has brought to software. I think it's important, said, uh, said Spencer. Uh, you and I, we've been around for a couple of console days, We've been around for a couple of days. Look at the real inflection points in our industry, like at the Wii. Um, it was hardware innovation that was linked with great software innovation. Now, now Xbox just needs to get to the software part. <laughs> I feel like they're almost there with the software because, like, they have like Game Pass on, you know, the Ally and the Legion Go, but it's a half step. Xbox does great software. Mm -hmm. If we're not talking about the games, <laughs> <laughs> they need to have some killer apps yeah. with the games. But but besides that, everything else is amazing. I love right. their their UX. Uh, they have some of the best UIs around. Um, but that's not saying too much. Yeah. A lot of gaming has pretty terrible UIs. Um, but yeah, I love their ecosystem. They got so much good stuff. It's just a shame that they don't have any like you know they they need some first party stuff. Yeah. Or something to get people to want to use an Xbox. Um, but he's 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 got the right he's got a lot of the right ideas. Uh, I'm glad that companies like Asus and Lenovo and even Valve stepped in and uh, were like, "Hey, we can enter this space." And it's yeah. telling Microsoft, like, "Hey, uh, there's something here. We should we should work on it." Mm -hmm. I also hope that it brings Xbox to Steam Deck in a better way, because right now yeah. uh, you have Game Pass, but it's like a, 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 a difficult thing to put on there, and it's yeah. kind of shitty. It, it's like trying to get the Epic Game Store or you know PS5 Remote Play working on there. Like you have to have some sort of know-how in order to do it, rather than it just working. You know? Yeah, like they have on their on the xbox official website they have a tutorial on how to do it but it's a huge pain in the ass mm -hmm. uh it might be more difficult than those other launchers yeah. i learned there's like a thing there's like a there's like an app you can download that will just install all of the launchers for you right uh, maybe they maybe game pass is on there i haven't tried it in a while uh but when i installed game pass it was a huge hassle um it would be great if there was just a linux app or if they if it was just on steam that would solve a, yeah. lo a lot of things. And it's Game Pass, so like, why not? If it's just streaming, it's not like you're losing any any uh, any customers. Well, I think the goal is for it to not just be Game Pass. I think the goal is for it to be Xbox proper. So it's not just streaming, it's you download the games and you right. play it natively. That, well, that's what Phil Spencer's hoping for, for PC handhelds. Right. But for Steam, for, for the Steam Deck... Right. I understand why they wouldn't want you to uh like uh purchase games through well no no you're right though. You're yeah. right. Why not just play these games on why not just have a launcher just like you would uh, the Epic Games right. Store. You put the Epic Games yeah. Store on there. Yeah. And why you not? can download games uh from there onto yeah. the hard drive and then play them from like natively from the drive. There would need to be a little bit of work to be done with Proton and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, why so not? It probably would be easier to get it to work on like a Windows device like the Ally. But I also think too, the Xbox um, OS itself, I think is a much more stable and game friendly OS than Windows is. Oh yeah. And it's it would be much easier if, it were, if we were to get a, an Xbox handheld, it's literally an Xbox handheld. It's the system in a smaller form factor with a screen on it because that would lead to a much more uniform Xbox experience rather than downloading a separate app 
that is sort of like this halfway point. Well, in my head, Phil Spencer is thinking of a straight up Windows handheld that is yeah. just more catered to uh, playing games, right. playing Microsoft games. Mm -hmm. And in my head, that is literally just this. I mean, it would need the Xbox app, which exists is just kind of not great. Yeah, it would need that to be a little better, but more so windows just needs to be like oh this is a handheld yes. so here's your handheld experience mm -hmm. when you turn the thing on it should be a special version of windows that's like okay we're gonna set this up like a handheld yeah so i can use a controller to do the setup process the touchscreen will be a lot easier to use because they know that the touchscreen's a tiny thing instead of being a instead of pretending like it's always a computer it all it almost needs to be like what windows 8 was were like Windows 8 had the tiles exactly and it was great it was great it was great <laughs> for <laughs> certain screens it was great for, for my Microsoft Surface Pro exactly and other tablets it was great it was bad for the desktop you know what it was <laughs> it was good for tablets it was actually good for like TVs cuz like the icons were big and like you yes. could see them faster but like when you get to like actual desktop like that's when like things you ran into problems right there because it was just easier to use the traditional Windows interface. It literally but, just looks like an Xbox. Yeah, well, Xbox has not changed since no. this came out. No, because remember every like every Microsoft device was supposed to have the same uniform look. Yeah, like the phone, the Windows phones, the Surface, the PC, the Xbox. Mm -hmm. It's all supposed to have that uniform Metro look. But the Metro uh, look on PC. Like you tap a you tap a button and it brings you to the traditional Windows desktop. Yeah, and that's what everybody did. Yeah, they, they, but but on desktop, <laughs> yeah. on desktop you would just tap the Windows key and it would bring you back. But uh, my point is, like, if you were to do a Windows handheld, like you would need that overlay. You would need to essentially bring that back yeah. in order to have a much better catered experience. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm saying have something to differentiate whether or not it's a desktop or a windows handheld like right. like the handheld should have a unique handheld experience mm -hmm. uh i don't I, it would be great if you could also have that experience on a desktop but give us the option and and, and have it outright when i turn the thing on for the first time right because right now when you turn a windows handheld on for the first time it thinks it's a pc yeah and it thinks you have a keyboard and mouse connected and and it's a horrible thing to navigate through um so yeah i i think there's a a lot of room for improvement for microsoft and they mm -hmm. namely i think having an xbox launcher on steam now you got me all excited for that that yeah. would be that would be a really cool thing other other than that though microsoft just straight up needs to have a better uh experience for handheld users mm -hmm. and and phil spencer's gotta work with them to achieve that yeah if he wants to do it on his own, he, it would be an app, and that's not good yeah. enough. It's got to straight up be a, a handheld version of Windows. Well, I don't see why there can't be, you know, they do the, the dedicated Xbox handheld, but also have the app for people who already have Windows PCs handhelds, you know? Well, when you're saying a dedicated Xbox handheld, you're thinking not Windows at all. Correct. I yeah, I, think, yeah I don't think that's reasonable. Why not? I think that's an extra step. I I, I think that's I think that's unne an unnecessary step too far. Because Windows already exists and it's f it, it could be right. It, it would be very minimal effort to make Windows perfect for a handheld right. environment. It would be a huge undertaking to make an Xbox handheld that's just straight up the Xbox OS. Yeah. Uh and it doesn't seem worth it. I know, but like at the same time if they want it to if they want it to be a dedicated gaming handheld, they I think they need something a bit more stable than Windows. And I think the thing that could, is most catered to gaming is the Xbox OS. I think... Mm, I see what you're saying because... Uh, I mean, these Windows handhelds are a lot more stable than you think, mm -hmm. but they're still not a, an Xbox. Right. It's still not going to run everything great. Uh, that might cause some issues i would imagine like right now developers are mad at microsoft because the series s can't run mm -hmm. everything yeah i would imagine a windows and an xbox handheld would be pretty similar mm -hmm. it would have similar issues 
So I think just making it straight up a Windows thing might be the 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 way to go. Right. There. And then have things that are like, you know, like Valve has a list of games that they know are certified. Yeah. Microsoft could do the same thing with their handheld. Uh, H3 Catacomb says, uh, Xbox OS runs a modified Windows slash Hyper-V environment and runs the games as a virtual machine. But the hardware is static and not very like a PC. Maybe they go that route eventually by offering the virtual machine. But people... I hope I'm, I hope VM means virtual machine. <laughs> but people with low-end systems would bitch about performance. Well, I think any like an Xbox handheld would obviously have to be like a uniform system spec, mm -hmm. right? Because like the allies are all the same system spec, minus, plus or minus like a hard um, hard drive or RAM or whatnot. You know. Well, there's the the ally has the version that has. The shitty processor. Oh, okay. There, there, there are some varying degrees to all of these handhelds. Right. Uh, I, I the think the Steam Deck then, because like that, there's no yeah. difference between versions other than you know hard drive space. Yeah, there's slight performance update on the OLED, but mm -hmm. it's it's marginal. Um, yeah. Again, I think that if Microsoft has their own handheld, uh, they would have a compatibility list. Or something yeah. like games that are certified to work on here. Or you go to the storefront and it's like, these are all the games and this is how good they're going to run. Mm -hmm. Some games uh, might be play at your own risk kind of thing. Anyway. Uh, we got more notifications. We got beat-em-ups. Yeah, hey. You know that guy? Hey, uh, 39 months. Hello, Will. And then a heart like this. Hey. Uh, I'm here too, but okay. Riser, he thank, saw you for, you. <laughs> thank you for the 28 months and... Um, Rookia X Play, thank you for the two months. And hello, Fried Bisque. How are you? Um. All right. Uh, there's more to this. Yes. Microsoft story, though. There's a whole big um, Phil Spencer interview with Polygon. Um, they only posted two parts of the interview, though. The next part is about the Epic Game Store coming to my coming to Xbox. Maybe I don't know. Phil wants it. Phil doesn't just want Xbox games on other consoles. He wants other video game retailers on Xbox too. In an interview with Microsoft CEO of gaming during the annual game developers conference, Spencer told Polygon about the ways he'd like to break down the walled gardens um, that have historically limited players to making purchases through the first party store uh, stores tied to each console. Or in layperson terms, uh, why should uh, why you should be able to buy games from other stores on Xbox, not just the official storefront. Spencer mentioned uh, his frustrations with closed ecosystems, so we asked for clarity. Could he really see a future where stores like itch.io and the Epic Game Store exist on Xbox? Was it just a matter of figuring out mountains of paperwork to get there? Yes, said Spencer. <laughs> Consider our history as the Windows company. Nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, uh, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where you buy games. There is a real value in that. Spencer believes console players would benefit from that freedom too, uh, and so would console makers like Microsoft. Ex uh, Spencer explained how in the past, console makers would typically subsidize the cost of expensive hardware, knowing that a portion of every dollar spent on games from the platform over the years would eventually make it back to the console maker. Then in time, the console maker could recoup this, uh, the subsidy and hopefully more. But Spencer said Moore's Law has slowed down. The price of the components of consoles aren't coming down as fast as they have in previous generations. Worse, he explained, the console market isn't growing, with more gamers moving to PC and handheld options. Now, the notion of subsidizing a console and forcing players to purchase games through the official storefront to help recoup costs might not make sense. The walls... Uh, meant to lock people into consoles might be motivating them to stay out. Subsidizing hardware becomes more challenging in today's world, Spencer said. And I will say, and this me uh, this may seem too altruistic, I don't know that it's growing the industry. So I think, what are the barriers? What are the things that create friction in today's world for creators and players? And how can we be part of opening up that model? That That's interesting, because that's what I was thinking, like, if you just allow people to use the Epic Game Store on the Xbox, how are you going to make any money? Yeah. But he's got a point. The console market isn't growing. A lot of people are playing on PCs and mobile and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So a big part of that is where are my games? Where is it easiest to buy the games? Right. And a lot of for a lot of people, it's not on the console. Right. A- and you, like for us, we talk about consoles a lot, so we're in the console ecosystem. But yeah. people outside the ecosystem, it's a barrier to break into because mm-hmm. you're locking all of your stuff there. Right. But if you allow people to transition the stuff that they already have, it would make things a lot easier, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, where was I? The answer, in part, is scrapping exclusivity on more and more Xbox games. Spencer explained that the game uh, experience is hindered uh, when it ma- when it matters what console we play our games on or what shops uh, sell our games. As an example, he pointed to Sea of Thieves, a player he explained uh, shouldn't have to worry about what hardware they or their friends have. Uh, they should just know if their fan if their friends have and want to play Sea of Thieves. Now, Spencer said, if we want to play on a gaming PC, then I feel like I'm more if I feel like I'm more a continuous part of a gaming ecosystem as a whole, as opposed to on a console. My gaming is kind of shared, uh, to use a gaming term, based on the different closed ecosystems that I have uh, that I have uh, played across. Spencer's views sound reasonable on paper. The console market is flat. The PC market is growing in part because it gives players a choice in where they buy games. So if consoles uh, want to bring players back, they'll need to be more like PCs. Uh, and that means bringing down the walled gardens of that for decades have protected the financial model of game consoles. If Spencer wants to make that vision a reality, then it's reasonable that we could one day boot up our Xboxes and see the Epic Game Store, H.io, and other shops waiting to sell us games and hopefully competing with one another to bring players the best possible deals. Yeah, so that, uh, I wasn't even thinking about this, but somebody on Twitter uh, was like, imagine if they just put Steam on the Xbox. That would be crazy. That would be wild. Mm. I have so many Steam games, and it would yeah. get me to play the Xbox way more. Yeah. And I w- that's what got me thinking, like, why would I then ever buy a game on Xbox? Steam would open it up so much more yeah. for me. But if they just put an xbox launcher on the steam deck yeah i'm i'm fucking bouncing between (laughs) everything then you Mm -hmm. know if they put an xbox launcher on the steam deck i'm playing game pass all day every day yeah um and vice versa then if they put steam on the xbox i'm using my xbox more yeah so it's all making sense now yeah i think getting more ways to play games on a console is the way to go Mm -hmm. because PC uh, PC market may be growing, and you know mobile gaming may be growing, but there's still the want and desire of gamers to play on a TV sitting on a couch, 10, 15 feet away. Mm-hmm. Like that is still there. That's how I like to play my games. That's how a lot of people like to play their games. So, you know, you buy the box and you put the box t- on your TV, and you're stuck with that box for like five or six years. Mm-hmm. And you have to buy the games through the box. Yeah. Yeah. So to have more options to buy games, not just through the box, but through different stores, it's like, you know, back when physical games were a thing, you know, Best Buy might have the game for one price, but Target has the same game, but they're running a sale for a little bit cheaper. That creates competition. Yeah. And that makes you um, more savvy in where you buy games because you go to Target and you buy the game for cheaper. And then you see they have these other games for sale. Or maybe Best Buy had the game uh, for a sale that day, and they, you know, have a, you know, they have a buy one get one deal. Or yeah. you see the, oh, they didn't get rid of their DVDs yet. I'll go get a DVD. See, see but the reason why exclusivity or 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 whatever worked so well for these companies is that like whoever's on top, whoever is selling the most consoles, mm-hmm. is the one making the most money and selling the most games. Yeah. So like everybody's got a PlayStation. Uh, I can't buy my place. I can't play my PlayStation games on my Xbox, you know, right. because PlayStation's like, why would I share? You mm-hmm. know, I'm already making all this yeah. money. But Microsoft and and Valve already share. Yeah, they're already doing it on mm-hmm. PC. So uh, why not? Why not allow the storefronts to cross paths elsewhere? It would it would help both parties in that situation. Yeah. Uh, in this case, Phil Spencer was specifically talking about Epic. And Epic would love to. Oh, just Epic be would one hundred percent. Yeah, like that's be just there a huge in a heartbeat. That only uh, helps Epic. Really. Yeah, <laughs> but he's saying that uh, it would help them too because. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, we got cross pollination is good. I guess we got more on Epic and their Epic Game Store later in the okay. in the episode, but yeah, that seems to be Epic's thing right now. Is just like put our store everywhere, even yeah. w- even where we don't belong. This is a very interesting uh, take on, on the industry, and I think that it's all of this shit's gonna happen. I think I yeah. think this is how Microsoft's gonna survive survive yeah and, and, because let's or, be, this let's is how be xbox clear. is going to survive let's be clear like sony's not having this conversation because no. playstation is doing just fine nintendo is not having this conversation nintendo will never have this conversation nintendo will never have this conversation yes. playstation might end up having this conversation you think so many years from now i think if all of these companies are playing nice with each other mm-hmm. i think that sony's gonna be left out and they might start losing part of their market share okay kind of like with um cross play yeah no yeah. exactly like like cross play yeah uh, a lot of i don't think uh japanese uh, gamers were into pc stuff until very recently right. they all they're all like getting pc games now uh so i think that that, that that's a new concept to them yeah and i think that that if microsoft you know keeps playing nice with all of these uh, other manufacturers or all these software companies, uh, they're gonna... Sony's gonna start feeling left out. Right. Right. I saw the ROG Ally in a bunch of stores when I was over there. Same yeah, thing yeah. with, like, all these, like, fringe ones, too, like the One X player and stuff. Okay. So that shit's really popular with them, and if, and if uh, you know, Microsoft makes it easier to play games across all platforms, across all stuff. I mean, Xbox is not popular over there, no. but it could be if if everything just works on it. If it's yeah. a if it's a tiny cheap computer that can play all that shit, yeah. then it's probably going to end up becoming pretty popular. Yeah. And, and uh, you you can get an Xbox and play all of this shit across all platforms mm-hmm. or you can get a PlayStation and be completely locked in. Well, I think that speaks back to like the um, the lofty promise of the PlayStation Vita because mm-hmm. that that introduced the concept of crossplay. You buy the game and it's available on your PS4 and your PS Vita, mm-hmm. and that never really took off. Mostly because Sony didn't really like back it. To yeah, that was called crossplay. Isn't yeah. that ridiculous? Yes, because it's still Sony to Sony. But it's that idea of like you buy the game once and you can take it with you, yeah. like on your mobile device and stuff. That they tried it, it didn't really work. Actually, they call it cross buy. Cross buy. Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, and the cross save was like you could transfer between. Yeah, the save. But still, like they tried it and they didn't really like put their muscle behind it. It was all. It's that's why yeah. I bought a Vita because yeah. of the cross buy. Yeah, I love the idea of being able to play a game on both my PlayStation Four and yeah. Vita at the same time. And then Nintendo figured out how to do it, but Nintendo's way is like it's literally the same device. Yeah, like you have to plug it in or you take it. It's one or the other. Yeah, you know. Also, uh, there's a lot of Sony games on Steam. Yeah, so if they put Steam on an Xbox, fucking over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to wait a year for them mm-hmm. to come out on on Steam. Well, not really. I mean, Hell Divers. Yeah, was a, a massively successful for them for that mm-hmm. reason for the cross cross uh play reason so i i hope i mean that this is nothing but good news for i think everybody yeah uh i'm excited for that nintendo never has to worry about this i think no. nintendo is the only ones who can get away with ha- having uh their exclusivity because their first party stuff is just is worth being walled in for yeah um and it's you know it's not that expensive and, right. and their hardware is usually pretty good. Well, their games are usually still expensive, even the digital yes. games. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, being able to get them, their super... hardware is among the cheapest. Right. And their hardware is, I mean, it's not powerful, but it's solid. Like you're yeah. not going to have any issues. Yeah. 